Hey everyone, this is Heidi. I'm doing a blog on awareness and the brain. And I just did a video on the default mode network, which is a part of us that kind of automatically wanders towards dissatisfaction. And today I want to talk about the inner critical voice from Dr. Robert Firestone's separation theory, because it's really fascinating. So I'm going to share a quick video so if you can look at this, this is about, I have a picture of a penguin here, and this kind of represents Fi Firestone's theory. I call it the squid. He calls it your defense mechanisms, the fantasy bond and the inner critical voice. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the critical voice, and then there's this part of you that thinks about thinking, which I call the prefrontal cortex. And so we're just gonna be talking about these two different parts he calls it the self and the anti-self system. And these two create what's called a psychological equilibrium, which is really fascinating. The idea is that when you do things in your life to make your life better, that it results in anxiety states. Like they say even like a wedding or they say even good stress is stressful. So in this theory, when you have excess stress, what happens is the psychological equilibrium gets disturbed and your squid will like pull you down. That's sort of the idea. So I wanna explain a little bit about what the squid is for those who might be interested. And the takeaway is we wanna remain open, honest, vulnerable, in a feeling state. And these mechanisms, specifically the critical voice, they reduce intimacy and they prevent us from achieving the goals we want if they're successful. Uh, but if we can see them, see them for what they are, and differentiate from them and link up to our goals, we have higher integration and we get the outcome we want. So I talk about how you can have fast and slow, or I call it the no brain and the yes brain. You've heard other videos where I talk about that. I've started calling it the elephant and the writer as well. So here's a picture kind of to think about different parts of our brain. And when we're thinking about the squid, that would be like the elephant and the prefrontal cortex or thinking about thinking would be the writer. So what we wanna do is we wanna think about what's going on and try and make what is basically unconscious. If you look at the elephant part of things that happen in our lives, it really is not within our conscious awareness. So for example, when a person has mind wandering and there's a study that shows in 2010, they did a study of 250,000 people text messaging uh, to see how often they mind wandered. And they found that 47% of the time they mind wandered. So when this is happening, this negativity bias, this default mode network, which is part of the critical voice, what's happening is it's really at an unconscious level. And the way we can help that is that mindfulness causes the default mode network to just crumble. So again, we want to bring in the ability to think about thinking and our our newer brain systems, the prefrontal cortex, the neocortex, the yes brain, to help these older mechanisms become more conscious. So the critical voice is like part of the default mode. I recommend watching the video I just did where I talked about what the default mode is. It's basically not nice and it lives inside you and there are things you can do to be kind to it and bring it along so that you can successfully achieve your goals. And what it is, is it's basically, you can think of it as the hostile, cynical voices that live inside your head that prevent you from completing the goals that you want to complete in your life. And my main message in this blog is that you can think about thinking, you can make what can sort of seem like elephant, unconscious urges, you can cultivate response flexibility, which is the ability to pause between impulse and action, you can wedge in new behaviors or new thoughts, and you can bring in those slow systems, the yes brain, the writer, the prefrontal cortex, the self system, the conscious part of you, you can wedge it in, and you can make that be your strongest voice, the voice that chooses. And when we're doing this whole process, like I said in video number one of my series about interoception, we really want to be in our body. So what would happen is, as you're having the default mode network, as you're having the critical voice come up, you're going to notice sensations in your body. And part of staying grounded and present is noticing the sensations in your body 
and staying present with those instead of getting whoop taken somewhere else and going into a behavior that doesn't align with the behavior you want to choose. So you've got the inner critical voice. I'm going to do a quick overview of Firestone's theory. Uh, the self system is the part of you that can think about thinking. I call it the medial prefrontal cortex. And in this theory, I call it calm lake. If you like this theory that I'm describing, I have a 75 minute class you can purchase on my website that explains it. And then you have the anti self system. So, and I, it's called the, I call it the squid. He just calls it your two defense mechanisms. One is the fantasy bond and the other is the inner critical voice. I'm not going into the fantasy bond today, but you can just think it's fantasy. It's also called a merged identity. So it's whatever it is, whether it's your sports team, whether it's workaholism, whether it's gambling, whether it's an addiction, it's just that thing that reduces intimacy in your life. It's something that you have a fantasy about and that takes up your time and your energy and resources rather than real in-person time relating where you're being open, honest, and vulnerable. These things can be tricky because we can call some of these things self-care, uh, but in a sense, a fantasy bond is whenever you're doing things that are reducing intimacy in the same way that the critical voice, if successful, uh, prevents you from taking positive action and reduces intimacy. So the inner critical voice is an identifiable system of thoughts. And I have in my class, I explain what you can do to identify it, quantify it, and understand it, and differentiate from it. And if it's successful, it prevents you from achieving the goals you want in your life. So there's the self-system, the anti-self-system, and these two create a psychological equilibrium. And this kind of summarizes the whole theory. People develop a system of defenses early in life in order to cope with the pain of living. He calls it interpersonal pain and death anxiety in the theory. And thereafter, they exist in a psychological equilibrium that they seek to protect at all costs. That was the interesting thing. Why I really got into this theory is that there's these unconscious mechanisms like your elephant, it definitely wants to stay in there. And if you're talking from a spiritual standpoint, your ego, it wants to take you over. So we have to think about thinking slow down what's going on, stay in our body, and try and watch what's going on in order to make these mechanisms that are largely unconscious, conscious. And so what, what this is to me is your brain, it's intended to achieve excellent executive function. Because you have a healthy social engagement system, because you have a healthy brain, you can achieve great brain integration. But what happens is from the time you're young, all the way to when you grow up, some people, their brain doesn't wire up correctly. So you have certain mechanisms that develop when you're very young to protect you. And my class explains this better, the longer one. So when you're born, your brain is like 25% developed. And then by age three, it's like at least 80% developed. And it gets wired up due to our social environments. Um, but if we're not wired up correctly, what happens is we tend to self-soothe. We create a fantasy of a loving mom. If our loving mom, if we're crying, 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 and our loving mom isn't there, we create a fantasy, we suck our thumbs, we have our blinky, we hold on to things to keep us alive. And it's a brilliant mechanism when we're really young. The problem is if we keep doing that, if our computer screen, if our video game, if a uh, love addiction, our our boyfriend or our girlfriend becomes our obsession, if we can no longer kind of successfully differentiate from something and link up to the whole, what happens is this kind of fantasy bond, it just continues to kind of wreak havoc in a person's life in adulthood if the brain doesn't develop the way it naturally was intended to develop, where you have a healthy functioning social engagement system. And when I say that, please look at my videos where I talk about polyvagal theory and uh, the, where I talk about the handouts and a dysregulated nervous system, that talks about the social engagement system and what that is and what a healthy social engagement system is versus someone who's more defended and inward, which is what I'm talking about today. So the idea is people develop these defenses and their brain just isn't wired up correctly, so they need to substitute real in-person time relating with objects and other things. And so this is just a final summary of the theory you have like your part of you that thinks about thinking it's called the self system who makes conscious choices and then you have this inner critical voice 
And a takeaway, if you've managed to make it through this whole video, is when you find yourself feeling inferior or superior to others, that's when you know that your squid is at play. And you can just take a step back. The idea is that we all share death in common. You can think how we all share the same air, how we all have a beating heart, how we all have a brain, and, you know, lots of different organs, systems. And you can just think of all the things we share in common, and that will help us go from a place of black white thinking, which is more like the elephant, and go into like our thinking about thinking part, which isn't so judgmental. And it just feels more connected with all of life. It has friendly, curious eyes. And when you're thinking superior, inferior, when you're in that part of your brain, it's kind of more, more primitive. So that's the idea when we're trying to integrate, you want to come from friendly curiosity and just be aware if you're feeling inferior or superior. And that the self-system and the anti-self-system together, these create a psychological equilibrium. And if something positive is happening in your life and you notice that suddenly you're self-sabotaging, that would be the time to speak up, to, have, to talk with someone, to slow it down, to cultivate what's called response flexibility, where you pause between impulse and action, and to try and catch your squid before it takes you over and prevents you from doing the very thing that you're on, in the process of achieving. So this, I'll just end with this kind of chart from outwardness to inwardness. So on the left are things that are positive, like setting and accomplishing goals. Just if you have a healthy functioning social engagement system, that would be the measure. And then on the other end, when someone's inward, they're more rigid, they're more passive, they tend to have a merged identity, um, they tend to have more kind of compulsive, impersonal, masturbatory uh, sexual encounters, there's just kind of a hypercritical attitude. There's a lot of certain behaviors that someone who's more defended has because this is what the theory says it's too anxiety provoking to be present, honest, open, in touch with their feelings, and connected with other people in touch with their feelings because of whatever it is that's going inside their brain and body. That's sort of the idea. Again, I don't think the brain is wired up right. And the way this relates to the default mode is, like I said, there's something wrong with the default mode. The problem is when it's not well integrated with other parts. You get this rumination, this I, 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 and this top-down thinking where you think that you know things and you see other people as objects. So this is just another way to think of when someone has lower states of integration versus higher states of integration. This is a theory um, that helps explain it. So thanks for listening today. That was, this is a little more theory oriented than usual, but I just wanted to share.